CAN, or Controller Area Network. This is our newest network. It is a serial network. It's covered by international standards that have been adapted by the SAE. So it's not only a U.S. standard, it's an Asian and European standard, our first true global standard. It's a robust, simple, and versatile technology and has several different configurations. In a simple point way to look at it, if we look at a complicated system where a lot of different things used to have to come back to the dashboard up in the upper left, we can now have a very well organized system where they do very easy to do things like you see at the bottom right. It's so versatile, it's used in industry and even agriculture tractors and farm equipment are using the CAN bus. It has a high degree of real-time capability with excellent error detection and fault confinement capabilities. Now it comes in three flavors and you might say four flavors. CAN A is low speed, CAN B is mid speed, CAN C is high speed, and Chrysler has a high speed CAN C diagnostic only bus. Now here are the three configurations you'll find. Two wire high speed CAN called CAN C. Two wire CAN middle speed called CAN B and single wire called GM LAN low speed CAN or single wire CAN. The CAN C high speed is 500,000 bits per second. Minimum speed is 83,300 bits per second and single wire is 33,300 bits per second. Now here's our signal for a high-speed CAN. And we want to take time to talk about this. First of all, it's a twisted pair wire, and you see that down in the lower left-hand corner, the twisted pair, right off the vehicle photo we took. There's two wires, and there's two signals. Now if you look at this, CAN-H is the red signal. That's called CAN high, CAN H. Do not confuse CAN H with high speed CAN. Sounds pretty stupid, doesn't it? Let me define this for you further and you'll understand it. CAN low or CAN L is the blue one. That's the other wire. There's two different wires. Here's where their name comes from. The dominant state is where they get their name. So if we look at the recessive state, the passive state, they both read approximately 2.5 volts. If we took a voltmeter and went in the ALDL with no communications, we'd get about 2.5 volts plus or minus a few millivolts. When we start communications, the driver in the module on CAN high is going to go from 2.5 to 3.5 it goes high. The driver in CAN low is going to go from 2.5 down to 1.5. It goes low. This is where they get their names. All CAN two wire systems, high speed and low speed, have a CAN H and a CAN L. All medium speed and high speed have a CAN high and a CAN low. And they derive their name from here. Let's look at what this actually looks like on a lab scope. This is a lab scope, and I want to take the time to point out that we're looking at 16 microseconds full screen. You've got almost two full pulses in 16 microseconds. We're looking at millions of a second here. Can high is the blue one going up. Can low is the red one going down. They're recessive where they both read two and a half. They're dominant where can high is at three and a half. They're can low is at one and a half when it's dominant. All this stuff we've been talking about, dominant and recessive, is really going to start hitting home with you here. Now we're going to talk about this twisted pair. You see that blue wire is twisted together down there. When wires are twisted together like this, any noise induced on the wires is the same on both wires. We're going to run them through the input. It's called a differential amplifier. It works in a special way. The signal coming in on the plus side goes straight through and does not get changed. It's just like it came in. 
The one on the bottom goes through, but it's inverted where it's just the opposite. We add the two together, they cancel out. So when we look at this, we look at the two signals down here below the arrow. If we add them together, they equal zero. But what's our signal look like? Our signal is equal and opposite. It's going in opposite directions. It will go through because when they're together, there's no difference. They cancel each other out. And at the differential amplifier, we see zero volts. When they're dominant, can high goes high up to three and a half, can low goes low down to one and a half, the difference, two volts. So if we differentially hook our scope, we'll see zeros and two volt signals on can high. But we're also going to use it this way. There's two ways to look at it. If we have a noise problem, we need to look at it differentially. Where we put both of these superimposed on one channel, and we'll talk about that more later. But for diagnostics, look what we got. If you look and you've got a blue signal on the blue channel, and you got nothing on the bottom channel, you know which wire has got a problem, which module is causing a problem. Remember, a module is going to drop it down to one and a half when it's dominant on the low side, raise it to three and a half when it's dominant on the high side. So this is high speed can, differential measurement. This is medium speed can. They're also equal and opposite, but they don't start at two and a half volts. They both start at zero. This is called fault tolerant because this system will work with just one of these signals. Now, the red one on the bottom is can low. It does the opposite of what can high is doing. It goes low to become dominant. The blue one is can high. It goes high to become dominant. And these are both on the medium speed bus. Remember, can high, can low is talking about the, what the signal is going to do, not the speed. If we want fault tolerance, we can cut off one of these and the other one will still survive. That's what we have here in this example. We have low speed can, we just cut it in half and instead of getting a 5 volt signal, we wind up with a 2.2 volt signal and it works just fine. This is low speed can. One channel going from zero up to five volts. We don't need the other half. This one will survive. So what you've looked at is that can be is fault tolerant. It comes from its ability to revert to a single wire communication mode. What you could say is that low speed can is already starting off with one signal missing. And it's, the circuits are all made to work that way and it wouldn't be a problem. This is what it looks like. Now can B can tolerate ground voltages as high as 1.3 volts. If this amplifier is picking it up, has got 1.3 volts of ground voltage instead of zero, we can tolerate it. This is what can high, can plus, can minus, you're going to see them called both ways, looks like. Can plus or high goes to 5 volts to be dominant. Can minus or low goes to 0 volts to be dominant. This can tolerate 1.3 volts of ground noise. Single wire can is called can A and is used by some manufacturers. Speed is reduced. It's low speed can. Can C isn't fault tolerant and will shut down the bus if one of the circuits are open. This is a couple different versions of this. Most can C systems are set up to do this. There are some that will still try to limp by with can plus or can high operable. Now one of the things you're going to see in can is gateway modules. A gateway module is a module that links two buses together. Now what we have here is a LIN bus. It, that's a, a local information network. It's a low speed inexpensive network. It's used for things like in this example power windows, door locks, telephone, and seat motors. It connects over this low speed called UART 
back to a gateway module that's on the CAN. Now, any module on CAN that talks to two buses is called a gateway module. Here we've got roof, door, steering wheel, seat, and climate all coming to a gateway module, which will then go put it on the CAN bus. It's a way to get simple things put in without having to wire the, the two wire expensive modules. All ignition, with it, ignition on in this particular Chrysler, the front control module queries the PCM for the VIN code and says, what is the VIN code stored in the PCM? Next, the front control module queries the cabin compartment node or module for a VIN code. See what we're going here? All three modules must have the same correct VIN number for the front control module to download the build configuration into all modules. Now we took this little course down the road here to show you that CAN can become very complex and very simple and that you should not be just going in and taking stuff out and saying, oh, I'll go get a junkyard PCM and put it in this CAN vehicle. If it is a Chrysler, for sure, and with a lot of other manufacturers, it will know it's in the wrong vehicle. And now these two will not communicate with each other. If you go get a new front control module and put it in here, it knows how it was built at the factory. And it's going to try to make this car operate like that. But the safe mode is, if it can't agree on all three, every module uses the last thing it was told to do. So we're bringing this up because we want to break everybody of the habit of trying to use salvage parts in CAN. We showed you a gateway module earlier on a block diagram. Here in this block diagram, we got a couple gateways. It's a gateway between CAN B, the medium speed bus, and CAN C, the high speed bus. Let's see how that looks. If we look here, we see that if we want to communicate from the steering column on the medium speed CAN B, we can go through this twisted pair and talk to the front control module along with all the other modules at the bottom. Remember, all modules see all signals. So that's our one channel. The other channel is the high speed CAN C. If we wanted to talk to the front control module, we could talk through there. Remember, we also talk to all these other things like analog brake, powertrain control module, steering column, transmission, they all talk together for high-speed, real-time information. That means the front control module is also a CAN gateway between bus B and bus C. And it has a special CAN-C high-speed diagnostic port that's unique to Chrysler. Here's a Toyota CAN-C. It has no gateways. It's got three modules hooked to the DLC. We notice it follows the conventions. CAN H, CAN L. You know what hook your scope leads. Channel 1 goes on L, channel 2 goes on high. We know when we see the signal go dominant on high, it's going to go up in voltage. We see the signal go dominant on low, it's going to go low. But they're both on high speed CAN. We can isolate these by pulling the uh, junction connector here. But we got some more stuff to talk about before we get too far down that road. Can C is high speed for real time systems like engine, ABS, and the Cadillac of everything where every car is going to have in a few years stability control. Now we got to get into the diagnostics. We've talked about the three different kinds. Let's get down to really diagnosing these individual buses. If you have a scan tool who can go in and talk and query the bus and get a status, get a ping, go talk to individual modules and pick up their information from them, pull the trouble codes, use your scan tool to go see this. Find out who's not talking. If you know who's not talking, we can focus on that particular one. Now, what this happens to be on a medium speed bus, it's the occupant restraint controller. This is going to run the airbags. 
just as a matter of interest for you, all of these cars are measuring the occupant, getting its weight and their height by seat position and seat weight to determine what the occupant restraint controller is going to do on bag deployment. But that's another class. But we're on this medium speed bus, so what we know we're going to do is we're going to take our two channel scopes. Remember when we're using this? Because we can take our two channel signal and put up here. We know that channel, the top one is the blue and the bottom one is the red. Because can minus goes down when it's dominant, can high goes up when it's dominant. We have both signals at this module. What does that tell us? We had scan data that said it could not talk to a module and we identified as the occupant restraint module. We come here, we have a good signal. All we have to do now is check the power and grounds and change this module. Every time you change a module, make sure it doesn't need reprogramming. Now, I know on this car that none of these can bees need to be reprogrammed. But since we're not talking about one manufacturer, verify that any module you're putting in doesn't need to be flash programmed. Otherwise, you're going to get into trouble. All of these modules on Chrysler get programmed by the front control module at startup. We talked about that scheme. So all we're going to do now is talk about walking through. If we had no idea which one is dead, but we've got some bus problems, we simply walk down till we find one that's not bad. If we could not diagnose, but we know we had a problem on can B, we come on down here from module to module looking for our normal signal. Voila, we found a normal signal. Now what just happened to our bus? What happened to our bus was it got slower. Why did it slow down? Let's go back and look at it again. Look how fast it was here. Here it's slower. What's happened is we have gone to low speed CAN because we've lost the red H channel. By setting our meter up the way we have, we know that there's a break in the wire between the audio amplifier and the radio on the CAN low minus circuit. Let's talk about that one more time. We had both signals with the radio. We get to the amplifier, quite a distance away, by the way, uh, not just sitting up by the radio. We know there's a break in the wire between the audio amplifier and the radio because we lost the CAN L signal. We had them before. We move it to the next module, it's gone. And what you're going to find that all modules below this also has it missing. So even though you're looking at a very, very complex system like this with 25 modules, the diagnostic principles we've been using of verifying the signal at the module and then changing the module when we verify the signal's getting there and it can't respond properly is still the best way to diagnose. Now, we say it can't, we gotta make sure it gets there this is an actual connector off of a module. It did not come off CAN, but it is full of corrosion and it was causing problems. We see that all the time. Now you can diagnose all of these together, the same type of information. You're going to diagnose CAN C, CAN B, CAN A. The only difference is with CAN A, it is not fault tolerant. If we lose a signal, it stops. All the principles we've been using with the outputs work the same. If you need to go back and look at this, go back and look at whichever signal you want and use that to do the validation of signal at the module and then changing the module that's bad. And remember, anytime you change a module, make sure it's not one that needs to be programmed and no more salvage junkyard modules.